practitioner here, uh, kind of first thing in the morning, so uh, I just figured I'd do a bit of a ramble. Um, um, the new Hitchhiker's blog is uh, my thoughts on, well, to quite literally quote Douglas Adams, life, the universe, and everything in it. Um, today's episode is going to be on politics. Um, I've been doing a little bit of thinking lately, um, just about the entire political you know, North American and Canadian systems, and I uh, talked about uh, on one of my videos about end of days yesterday. Uh, you know, the thing is that what's bugging me is that, you know, I mean, it's a Sunday, and I'm just thinking, well, you know, there's probably a, probably what, uh, a billion people worldwide, uh, if memory serves, one-sixth or one-seventh of the world's population, who are all Christian. They're going to be going off to little churches to pray for a... Um, well, to pray for effectively whatever they want that week. Now, of course, they're varying what they believe in. But, you know, it's... You see, this is one of the things I have a problem with when it comes to religion. The, um... You know, it's it's funny. The, um, now, assuming that the Global Consciousness Project was correct, then um, when everybody has their mind focused on one particular world event, apparently random data are supposed to be shifted. Now, again, uh, again, as I said before, that whole psychokinesis thing is another thing for... Uh, further consideration, but if what they're saying is true, you know, and we were doing that, then wouldn't uh, then by that logic, uh, most religious people would probably argue, wouldn't it be a good idea to go to a church or, or some place of worship and all try to collectively uh, uh, pray to this a uh, higher power? If even if the higher power doesn't exist, your own willpower will start um, uh, trying to bring about in some uh, cases the changes you want in the world. Well, there's one small problem with that. Most of the time. I mean, I hear people pray for a better world or, or pray for this sort of thing, pray for that sort of thing. When, and, and again, this is my major problem with religion, is that when, um, you know, when people, you know, religion for oneself is all well and good if it's a comforting system. Or, or like I said in my case, uh, I got an email back from Mindfreak uh, when I asked him about where he actually, you know, just his personal opinion about where he thought my metaphors and stuff like that were coming from with those visions. And then he said it was possible that... Um, that maybe the psychic element was being used, and uh, my brain was just simply providing me with a comfortable, um, uh, besides coincidence, the other one he would uh, more likely accept was the my brain using psi providing me with a comfortable interface. So that's all well and good. Problem is, though, is that, um, you know, everybody goes to church or, or to their religious ceremonies with so many different attitudes in mind. Uh, some want to, uh, uh, some pray for, uh, for their views on life to overrun the world. Some people pray for, um, uh, even sometimes in churches, there will be people who pray for money. Other people will pray for a sick relative. Some people, uh, you know, will, will be only praying for, you know, for something for their own life, you know. I mean, the, and of course the thing is, though, is that everybody, uh, or at least uh, large chunks of the books I used to read back when I was religious, um, again, I'm talking secular books about people who wrote on religion and prayer, said that one of the biggest things they found wrong with this was that everybody was having this gimme, gimme, gimme attitude when it came to prayer. Now, the thing is, is that I find this funny, considering that most of these so-called religions, at least their original ideas were supposed to be, that, um, you know, praying for helping your fellow man, that sort of thing. Like, that's what all these original scriptures were talking about. You know, I mean, I guess it has gotten perverted over 2,000 years. Okay, sorry, I digress. I'm starting to ramble a bit. I think my bottom line is, though, is the fact that, you know, it's sort of like it's contradictory that we end up having, um, and here's another thing, we end up having so many different religions worldwide, and this is the problematic part, is that if ever, if they say that, you know, like getting into a, into a religious institution and then focusing all your uh, collective willpower to try to bring something about in the world, what about all the other religions and all the other churches and all the other denominations, which might be all praying for slightly different things, and as a result, there's mental intention clashing or what have you. As a result, the um, you might get micro effects here or there, but the same net re result with religion, like scattered thought. Uh, again, assuming the global consciousness project research is correct. Again, I'm I'm positing here. This is pure speculation. Is that um, it, uh, basically would that would be that we would again uh, uh, sheer dictation of probability would uh, would go out again because everybody is focusing in every which way and since they're all tossing against each other um, the laws of probability would uh, it would all be a matter of like who's stronger who's lesser you know uh, focus on willpower or when in cases like that uh, is happening where there's no I you know way to focus and isolate the uh, uh, the thing away from deviance from probability sheer probability kicks in again. <laughs> because, because again, everybody's got so much, you know, people's minds are in random places. So, of course, the entire sample of distribution of events of prayers correlated to, you know, uh, prayers made, correlated to prayers answered, would actually be 
matching by chance. Only in areas where you might have hyper focus on, say, 9/11, uh, or in multiple areas of prayer studies um, where controls were good and there actually was a psychic effect, might you have prayers here and then have, say, like uh, uh, effects either go up significantly higher or significantly lower. Sorry. Uh, okay, I'm trying to measure with my hands, but I digress. Um, anyway, that's the one. One of those two things which is bugging me today. The second one which is bugging me today is the uh, whole issue pertaining to Canadian and American politics. Um, you know, I've I've already ranted and raved a lot about uh, cosmocracy and stuff like that in the past few videos, and soon enough I'll actually be, um, I already made a video um, of about a couple of hours worth of the actual cosmocratic presentation, uh, where I'm actually going to go in with the lab code again and explain, um, you know, and the actual scientific stuff, and explain in full technical detail um, what each of the slides mean, what each of the implications mean, um, you know, sources to give people a, a more co a contextual idea of what's actually going on. Um, that's more for those of you who might be watching out there who are skeptics um, uh, to uh, or, or skeptics to the idea of space colonization. Um, though I suspect my usual audience who are watching uh, probably don't have any objections to that, considering that uh, I've you know I, I've gotten no negative replies on that yet. So, but you know the thing is that this is what bugs me. Um, I took a look um, a while back at CBC's The Fifth Estate, and um, what was I also took a look at a couple of other sources again mainstream, mind you. And what's interesting is that there has been documentation to show that the Bushes and the Bin Ladens have been around, uh, you know, have had uh, family business contact since the 1980s, 1970s. I mean, there was even plenty of information, uh, again, still a matter of public record, that Osama Bin Laden was uh, contracted to fight the Russians back in the 19, uh, uh, 1980s, you know, in the Afghan war. I mean, that's pretty well a matter of public uh, fact. And I suspect that the... Um, Whoever, you know, probably when Bush Sr. was in, or even somebody else, they probably said, like, hey, we need some help here. And, um, and Osama was like, hey, I'll volunteer. You know, like, you know. And here's the other thing. Um, the thing is, what, and another matter of public record, was the official response of the FBI when, they, when it was found that um, all the remaining bin Ladens had been flown out of the country. The official story with that is that they determined that, uh, that uh, the bin Ladens had uh, said that they didn't know where their uh, relative Osama was, and therefore, um, since they, uh, they couldn't have been any of help, and they were trying to take them out for safety, you know, fear of reprisals against uh, Arab people, that sort of thing. Well, the thing is what bugs me about that is that wouldn't it have been more efficient for the FBI to, even if not investigate that, but, you know, um, ask about um, or ask the Saudi royal family or ask, you know, them about, like, well, where does, uh, where does bin Laden get his funding? Uh, you know, where would bin Laden hide if you knew? I mean, like, uh, you know, like, where would Osama hide? Like, you know. I mean, they're his relatives, so they might have a better idea of what he might do, you know, giving the, giving the FBI at least a possible couple of leads to send troops into Afghanistan or maybe or what have you, and actually find him as opposed to bombing the entire place and us not finding him. I mean, I've heard about recent tapes that keep coming out over the news every so often. Uh, Osama sent out a new terrorist tape or what have you. I mean, you, you hear about them in the news every so often, and the thing is, it's sort of like, well, either Bin Laden should be dead by now, and if he is dead, uh, like um, a lot of people I've talked to even just simply say, ah, oh, he's probably dead. But the thing is, if you hear about these tapes still in the news, then who's making them? You know, who has the technology to be able to fake his voice? Wait a minute, wouldn't you need, uh, you'd either have to be a terrorist organization with, uh, rather than based in cell format, you'd actually have to have somebody in local area producing those tapes. Or, um, and anyway, uh, I digress though. The thing of course is though, is that from that, it does uh, strike me as a little odd. Now here's another thing. Without going into the conspiracy theories about 9-11, about the charges and all, uh, Figaro, a right-wing Italian newspaper, which was generally pro-U.S., like for the past five, ten years, published an article which said that uh, French intelligence had found, had seen a CIA operative visiting Osama bin Laden in Dubai, about five, where he was receiving medical treatment for kidneys, for his kidney problem, about five months before the Twin Tower attacks happened, before the 9-11 attacks. So, um, it is possible that, uh, and here's my uh, suspicion at any rate, uh, remember, Right about that time uh, when Bush had gotten in, there was a large problem with Enron, and uh, you know it was making the, um, the Bush and his supporters look less credible. So of course, what do they need? They would need a distraction. So uh, here's my suspicion, and I'll explain it in the next video.